What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys another highly requested video and that is how to ship comic books. In this video we're going to be showing you guys how to ship a single comic book safely in the mail. And next week I think I'm going to do the other one where I share with you guys how to ship in that video, I'm going to do 25 comics, but it's the same method from 25 up to about 80 comics uh, is the max that I'm willing to ship at a time because of the weight. Um, so I'm going to share that, how to ship multiple comics in next week's video. But for this one here, a single comic here, what you're going to need is two pieces of cardboard cutouts that are just a little bit bigger than your comic here. You're going to need obviously your comic book. This one here I just sold on eBay, the Hulk Pit comic number one. I sold this one for $10 plus $8 shipping. Now this isn't going to cost $8 to ship, I realized that. It's going to cost between $3 to $5 if it does fit in this slot here, which is the oversized letter mail for Canada Post. If it does fit in this slot here, it should be able to ship since it's going from Ontario to Alberta with the weight being not too much should be $3.60 with taxes included. Uh, you're gonna also need some painter's tape, that is the right tape to use. These are my shipping labels that I use uh, at the end to write the addresses on, a Sharpie to do so, packing tape, and craft envelopes is what I use. These ones here are uh, $1.25 for six. Now this here is optional for my Canadian uh, sellers. This one here, you can get uh, the slot system from Canada Post, I believe it's $10, or you can order one from Etsy, which is only $5. It is just cheap little uh, wood here, but it does do the job. So I know it is gonna fit in here, but I just have this in the video to show you guys. So let's get straight into this. So you're gonna take your first piece of cardboard, and you're going to put it right in the center, and you're gonna put the other piece right on top. You're then gonna grab your painter's tape, just like this here. Now I have seen other people, whenever they do this, uh, they will tape the comic to the first piece of cardboard and then tape the second piece of cardboard on top of that. To me that's overkill. If you do it the right way, you shouldn't need to do and use all that extra tape. This one right here, it is not bouncing around and moving inside. It is nice and secure. So now you're gonna take one of your craft envelopes and you're gonna slide this into it like that. Now once you have it in, you are not simply going to seal it at the top here because it is gonna bounce around. You can see the cardboard end goes from here up to my thumb. So we are going to not only fold this one over, but also the end here. It doesn't go all the way up to the top, it goes to about here. So we're gonna fold that there as well, just like that. And then we are going to put some packing tape across the top and across this flap as well, making it all sealed up. Now once you have it taped up where you did fold it, the other end here, this one here that is sealed, I'm gonna also run a piece of tape there just to make sure it doesn't open up during transit. And just like that, we are finished. We just have to put the labels on it and it is ready to ship. So just like I said, this will fit in the slots here easily. Uh, without any hesitation. So this here with the weight should be able to ship for $3.60 anywhere here in Canada. Now for a lot of people watching this video you might see comments where people are saying this is not the right way how to ship. In my opinion everybody has their own method as long as it arrives safely. This here I've been shipping for months and months and months now never had any issues, never had any comics damaged or missing, as long as you have the cardboard the right size. You're not gonna want to cut the cardboard the exact size of the comic, because in transit, if it does bounce around, you want some protection on the corners and edges in case it is thrown around. It is the Canada Post, or if you're in the United States, the US Postal Service sometimes are extremely brutal with their packages. And even though this is thin, this here should not be damaged as long as you have the cardboard wide enough. Usually I do maybe an inch, uh, uh, maybe an inch, half an inch around the whole comic extra. So you definitely want to do that. The only other thing that I would recommend is once you put the address and the return address on this to also write with your Sharpie, do not bend. Now this here to me is common sense. 
This should not be bent. I don't know anybody in their right mind would look at this and be like, hey, it doesn't fit in the uh, mailbox, so I'm gonna bend it. You'll be surprised finding these bents all the time, so I do recommend putting a do not bend on it. Hopefully they will get the hints, but this is how you ship a single comic book. I use this method for shipping anywhere from one to five comics, depending on the width, because I do like to ship them, make sure they do fit in the slot here. If they are doing more than five, let's say six or more comics, I might ship two of these. Like I said, if it doesn't fit in the slot, sometimes it's 10 to $12, where this will be 360 so even two of them if i do two of these that's seven dollars compared to it being bigger and packing it and it doesn't fit in the slot and it being ten to twelve dollars i still save money by shipping two packages but this is how you do it here hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you guys in the next video and next week like i said i will share with you guys how to ship 25 comics and in that method you can do it for 25 to up to about 80 comics, but you will have to split up and I will share that in that video. See you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.